Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, I think I want to try in earnest to do a 24 hour reading vlog. I had like attempted this um, like a week or two ago and it just like, I ended up having way too many things to do. So I, although I did read a lot, it just wasn't a good time to actually try it. So it's um, eight, like 8.30 right now. I have an online therapy appointment at nine. So that ends at about 9.45. And then um, I'm gonna go to a, um, AA meeting at noon, but I think I'm actually going to walk there. It's just under two miles. And um, I have a little bit of computer stuff to do um, for my grad school application, but um, I'm going to walk there, you know? And so I'm going to have, you know, roughly 35, 40 minutes to listen to Gone with Wind, which is my, um, uh, it's one of my book club books. So I'll be listening to that on audiobook. Um, the Hoopla and the Libby Narrator are the same. It's, oh, who it is? Who is it? It's not Juliet Stevenson, I, but I feel like it's something Stevenson or Stevens. Anyhow, um, I'll be listening to that. And then I don't really have anything else going on. There's always a possibility that I would go to a meeting tonight, um, but then I don't have anything until later in the day tomorrow. So the 10 to 10 might actually work out pretty well, especially if I consider, you know, I'll be listening to an audiobook during any sort of travel. So let me show you what I'm reading right now. I have one that I like had misplaced this book. It's actually the reason that I'm applying to grad school um, to become a chaplain. And I had just misplaced this book. I turns out I had actually put it on the shelf because I'm selling my house and they're oftentimes when we have to leave the house for, you know, yesterday was the appraisal or inspections or whatever. Um, and so just constantly having to like make it look like we don't actually live here. So I had put as long as you need back on the bookshelf and then I couldn't find it because I don't normally put them like on the bookshelf like as they are shelved if I'm in the middle of reading them anyway this is as long as you need permission to grieve by J.S. Park he's a chaplain and um I'm honestly finding I'm having a hard time finding the cohesiveness in this book like what is the ultimate message I'm much more interested when he's talking about himself there are times when he's talking about other things and um and I don't know if it's just because like I had put it down for like a week or two um, or kind of like sparsely been reading it since I started. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that if I can read just like bigger chunks of it, I'm over, oh yeah, I only have like 50 pages left. So I'm hoping that I'll kind of like be able to finish up stronger um, and get more of the message that he's trying to convey. Along similar, similar lines, but more... Um, strongly Christian in its nature, is Crazy Love, Overwhelmed by a Relentless God by Francis Chan. Uh, my friend has really been into Francis Chan and uh, watches a lot of his videos, sends stuff to me on a regular basis. And um, I've really been struggling with grace, both in primarily in my relationship with God. Um, and then that overflows into my relationships with people. And basically, I don't feel deserving and when people give to me and are there for me, support me, which I've been going through a lot of, just a lot of difficult times lately. So my friends have, I've really been leaning on my friends. I feel guilty and I feel like I need to give back. I literally was like, can I wash your car? Um, because I feel like, like, I don't want them to be going through, uh, through anything that needs them, needs me to support them. I don't want that for them, but I want to be able to give back. And so I have this like transactional, um, nature and I'm feeling this with, with God as well and um and so just understanding grace which is undeserved blessing and like that's what's so amazing about it is that it is it is undeserved yet it is given freely um and so just kind of yeah having a better understanding of that like my head can know but my heart my heart needs help um, and then, fiction-wise, I have Within Arms Reach by Anne Napolitano. This is a, uh, like a family drama. We have three generations, and we're following, um, does it say three generations of Irish Catholics? Is that what it says? Um, in Fergo, sorry, three generations of a large Irish Catholic family. Um, so that's basically what I know about this book so far. I'm like 70 pages in, maybe. And so we have like the... Um, the grandma, she has like a bunch of kids. She lost a set of twins and a daughter. And then I think there are three grandchildren from which we've heard of, for, heard from two of them so far. So I think we've had four perspectives so far, the grandma, the son-in-law, and then his, his two daughters. 
Um, and I, I just feel, I, I like in, uh, getting a phone call. <clears throat> because my credit was pulled for the mortgage loan, I'm getting like 20 to 40 calls a day from brokers trying to sell me a loan. Um, anyhow, Anna Politano is the author of Hello Beautiful, which I have not read yet, but I have read Dear Edward and I absolutely loved it. And so far in this book, I just feel really like safe in her hands. I don't feel like there's anything. So I don't like very flowery writing. It For me, it like I can appreciate a beautifully crafted sentence or, um, you know, vivid imagery. I can appreciate it. But sometimes it's too much and I get like bogged down in the language to where I miss the message. I like writing like hers because it's, I'm not distracted by the language. It's, it's good. Um, but it's good in that it's very, it serves the story. And I feel very comfortable and like in good hands with her storytelling. So anyhow, um, I'm going to read a little bit and then I'm going to do my therapy appointment and, um, Eventually, I'll be walking over to the uh, the coffee shop, and which is next to the AA meeting. So I thought I was going to be able to read today. I have been on the phone texting or emailing with house stuff and grad school stuff all freaking day long. And then I just went um, walking to my car from um, a friend of mine. She is like 31 years sober. We went to dinner before a meeting and, um, and just went to their meeting. Um, so now it's 813 and I'm headed home. I might be too tired to read this. Yeah, this 24 hour reading challenge did not happen. So just came out of uh, donating blood and I have like five pages away from finishing Crazy Love um, by Francis Chan. Um, this is the revised and updated version. And so the last chapter is like five years after the finish of the first one so or like the the original so it's like the book ends and you can see he's like summed everything up and then oh five years later um so yeah so i'll have to see how that ends up ending but it's it's not really a book that i can like summarize or anything like that it's about god's crazy love for us and um and then and then what we need to do in response to that so I won't go into more depth than that and then earlier I finished as long as you need the grief book by J.S. Park um I liked it and especially I, I like I definitely say sometimes I do this where I just read in two short bursts of time and that really affects my enjoyment of a book and my like the a cohesive reading experience so then it makes it hard it's like is the book not cohesive or is just my reading experience not cohesive because I was only reading 10 pages at a time instead of 30 40 50 pages at a time that last bit that I read I read the last 50 pages in like in one sit down and enjoyed it much more funny how that happened so um, overall I think it's a good book particularly if you have grief in your life which kind of most of us do so and it was interesting to experience it through someone who had you know he had personal grief in his life and he dealt professionally with grief with other people's grief and, and then and that's grief that you feel yourself um what was i gonna say oh it was really nice and really nice about the book the structure of the book too the beginning of every chapter there is a trigger warning specifically for what's going to be coming up in that chapter so i really appreciated that so it is 6.08 and I'm going to go home, finish Crazy Love, probably read Within Arm's Reach as well. And then I'm going to go to a meeting at 8 tonight. It's like a young person's meeting. So um, and there's some people in there that are really cool. So um, yeah, I'm going to go to that meeting and then probably just come home and crash. 
Also, so I may be known by name and drink at the bar. I am also known by name and blood type at, by talent, the blood bank. Um, the other thing is one of the, um, phlebotomist there, um, she wasn't working on me, but she, she like, you know, like, Hey Aaron, when I walked in, so that's cool. Um, but then she came over to me while I was getting my, while I was sitting there getting my blood, uh, drawn, taken, um, sucked out of me. Um, she's like, Oh my gosh, there was a lady in here the other day reading your book. It's like, what? So cool. And she's like, just for like privacy, she didn't, she didn't, she wasn't like, Oh, you know, that author, I know that author, she donates here. Um, but I thought that was super cool. It's a good day when you finish two books. All right, so I have a few minutes to spare, so I thought I'd catch up with you. i um, about to go in to get a haircut. She's running like 15 minutes late because her client was running late, and... Um, so I'm just chilling here in the car for a few minutes. Um, I did go in and um, they, like Half Price Books is right across the street and I had like 25 minutes to kill. So of course I went over there. So I will show you the books that I picked up there um, after my haircut. So this is the before and the after went super short. I basically need something between this and a half, like in a few days, it's gonna be perfect. Um, but it still feels really good, especially since it's getting hot. But I'll show you those couple books that I picked up at Half Price books. Oh, that's what I'm already reading. First, I, first thing I saw was the sprayed edges on this, and I saw the words, a cozy fantasy steeped with love. This is Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne, and it says it is the first in uh, book one in the Tomes and Tea series. So this is Al, um, Al Reyna and Kian Tuan is to open a bookshop that serves tea while firelight drifts between the rafters. Don't we all want that? But Reyna works as one of the queen's private guards and Kianth is the most powerful mage in existence. Leaving their lives isn't so easy. And then more plot. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And then there's a fantasy, not fantasy, historical fiction read-a-thon coming up in June. And um, it's about I think it's probably my favorite genre, but I actually don't read it that often. Um, and I went back and watched Melinda at Web of Stories. She did a recently five on Friday, um, where she did five historical rec historical fiction recommendations. And I think this was the one that Alice Hoffman, The Invisible Hours, or The Invisible Hour. I think this is the one that, the, I think this is the Alice Hoffman that she recommended. Also, it's relatively short. Um, I was looking at Practical Magic, um, but honestly, that one was shorter, and I wasn't sure if Practical Magic was actually historical fiction or not. It seems like, from like the, the synopses I was reading, that Alice Hoffman's book all tend to be kind of like magic, like witchy kind of thing, but I haven't read her yet. So, um, yeah, let me know what your favorite Alice Hoffman is, or like what a good place to start with her is because I think Practical Magic is like a series if I remember or like understand correctly. So anyway, I'm about to go into a meeting. It's um, at six o'clock meeting so I should have some time when I get home to actually like chill and read. I keep getting home late and then like staying up late. I have a, a like I'm newly on a sleep med and if I take it too late then I end up feeling like drugged in the morning and that's not fun. So you know hopefully reading, medicine, early bedtime, early bedtime. Anyway, I'm gonna go to my meeting. Oh yeah, other thing, just came from the inspection. We got like the walkthrough by the inspector and then also we hung out with the homeowner because he's, he's our friend um, after the inspector did, did the walkthrough with us. Um, nothing major, but there's definitely need to be um, probably an electrician to come in. We already knew we're gonna be replacing the floors in all of the bedrooms and uh, probably the bathrooms as well. Um, carpet in the three bedrooms, whatever the hardwood, not hardwood, like laminate, Limit of flooring? Yeah. Um, in the bathrooms and the master bedroom. And then like new vanities. Um, new vanities and uh, probably like shower tub insert. Probably not like a full bathroom remodel, but um, yeah, make it look nice and functional. So it's Friday morning, um, maybe like 8.15. Uh, Charlie just got here, so the, she doesn't have school on Fridays. She doesn't have school Monday and Fridays. So the big kids um, are off at school and Charlie is here. And it's like as soon as her dad leaves, she's like, um, can I watch cartoons in here alone? Can you go read? So once again, I've been banished to my bedroom, um, which is fine because that means I get to read. So she's off watching uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender and um which i'm not into well i don't know maybe i could be i've just never really tried 
Anyhow, um, Reading Within Arms Reach by Anne Napolitano. I already did like my morning, my morning kind of reading routine. Um, and so now, um, and I was feeling like I wasn't making any progress. You know when you feel like it's kind of like reading on a treadmill where especially the, the font is really small in this book. And so I got the feeling that I was like reading and reading and reading and not making any progress. But I did just realize that I'm a third of the way through. So I'm getting there. So I'm right, I'm right around page 100, 113, 115. I'm not quite sure where Charlie ended up. She told me I was allowed to be back in the living room. This is after I'd taken her to Starbucks. And um, she's like, you can stay in here and read. Do you want to use the book, buddy? Which her sister, no, her sister, her mom, my sister, um, had my grandpa make this for me. So it's, you stick your thumb, actually, the woo other way around. Hard to do one-handed. You stick your thumb through the middle and then you hold the book. See if I can see if I can do it while doing it left-handed while I'm holding the phone right-handed. Come on. Okay, my thumb's too far into it, but that's how you hold it and it actually makes it really comfortable for holding a paperback, reading a paperback. Um, and so it's so cool. Like she, she kind of like showed my grandpa um, like the specs or whatever and um, he made it for me for so it was for my 40th birthday which was also my book launch party so it was like a really cool special gift so anyhow reading within arm's reach and is that where i am no okay i opened the book and i wasn't sure if i was gonna lose my place but okay anyway um so it's three generations of irish catholics and it's the the middle generation is like six siblings so like, like like the grandma is alive the grandpa's dead um he was like the 100 percent irish guy so grandma's still living she has like six kids and then there's some grandkids and um two of the perspectives we're, we're getting are from two sisters who are the grandkids and this isn't see it's it's not it's not like the the it's not like the closest knit family. Um, there's describing, the girls currently live with each other. Um, one's about to move out. Um, and their grandma kind of convinces them or like asks them, would you host this like family dinner? I don't know. I don't think it's like a special occasion or anything like that. They're just having this dinner. And they basically just like hate all being together. And um, it's not that much of a good time. And you're just feeling like everybody is just uncomfortable and doesn't want to be there, but they're family. So they're kind of stuck with each other. It is a beautiful day, Friday afternoon um, at Pete's oh, Pete's Coffee right now. I just got a matcha latte, an almond milk matcha latte with honey. So good. And I'm a weirdo that likes hot, um, hot drinks even in the summer. Beautiful 76 degrees right now, so perfect. Um, my mom's having an escetamine treatment down the street and she needs to be picked up in about 45 minutes. So I'm just here to chill. I went over to home, I got some lunch. I uh, had to get some stuff at Ulta, went over to Home Depot, checking out some stuff for the new house. Um, really didn't get, it really didn't make any headway there. I need to call my contractor and uh, discuss things with him. Um, but anyway, I've also, I'm, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm working on my notes for my Memorial Day speech because I'm the, gonna be the Memorial Day speaker at uh, one of our local um, mortuaries. I actually did it amazingly. I did it the year my husband died, like less than two months after Sam died, I was a Memorial Day speaker. My voice cracked once, but I was able to get through it. And the only reason I was able to do it was because I was so freaking numb. So we'll see if I'm able to get through it as well this time, but if not, it's totally okay. Pretty busy Saturday so far. It's 1:20. I'm sitting in the Old Navy parking lot. Um, I just went in. I need. To, I'm, I'm going to be the Memorial Day speaker at one of our local um, cemetery mortuaries on Monday, and um, I just needed something like nicer to wear than what I currently have. So um, just got a couple pairs of pants. Not sure which I'm going to have, but nice like pixie cut, you know, ankle whatever. This morning, I was going to go to this, there's this really good coffee shop that's in the same strip as where my 
AA meetings are, but they were like unexpectedly closed today. They're not normally closed on a Saturday. Like why would a coffee shop be closed on a Saturday? But they must have had like an employee situation, whatever. So I had to go to my regular Pete's Coffee, did some work on the Memorial Day speech. And then I went over to my meeting. Um, it was a women's meeting. It was a really good one. It was the first time I'd been to that specific meeting, although the regular place that I attend. And then um, my sponsor and I went back to that Pete's Coffee and my sponsor and I like officially met for the first time. And so that just looked like reading aloud like back and forth reading aloud the um the first like the first chapter kind of like the preface to the big book um it's funny because right across the street from that pete's coffee is this row of recovery houses like clean and sober living houses and i specifically chose the table that we sat at because it's the aa table like even before, when i was there earlier this morning there were the cu- a couple of guys there sitting it was probably sponsor and sponsee and that's who I always see, not those specific guys, but I always see like AA members sitting at that table. So I just kind of chose that table as a joke. But anyway, we had a good meeting. Um, I hadn't really heard her story yet. And I related to a lot of her story of like not being the fall down blackout drunk, but just starting to drink more frequently and having the obsession. Like once you think of a drink, like, oh, I want a drink. And then you, like, can't wait to get that drink. Or maybe it's not even that day, but you, like, you can't stop thinking about it. And, like, maybe tomorrow it's going to be tomorrow. Or, like, what specifically was happening to me is, like, my friends and I would schedule a happy hour. Let's say we're going to do it on Thursday. And, like, it's Monday. And all I can think about is getting to Thursday to get to that happy hour. And then what was starting to happen is then I'm so looking forward to that wine we're going to have on Thursday. I'm probably going to open up that bottle of wine Monday or Tuesday. Um to just like because I can't stop thinking about it so um yeah it was nice to kind of hear from somebody else who didn't have like the big dramatic you know keeping the vodka bottle under the under the pillow out bottles hidden and everywhere across the house DUIs and arrests and stuff like that like that those are the more dramatic stories and it's like yeah you're an alcoholic but for someone like me it's much more minor and it's it's kind of hard to swallow like I'm always questioning like am I really is it really that bad and it's like well it isn't really that bad yet but I'm it's a progressive disease and I'm definitely I can see the progression throughout my like my drinking life so anyhow I also read this morning I am um I'm over halfway through within arm's reach and it's going really well I just I feel like I'm like dug into the book right now do you ever feel like as much as I love like picking a new book. I don't actually love starting a new book. I keep looking over my shoulder to see if my mom's coming. Um, I'm also, I'm expecting a call from my contractor. So I was like, Hey, I'm just going to go outside and in case he calls. Um, and also I don't want to like stand around old Navy once I'm done. Anyhow, I hate the process of just starting a book because I feel like I'm like not, I don't know the story yet. And so I don't, I don't know anybody yet. I don't know where we're going and it just doesn't feel comfortable yet. And if I feel very comfortable in this story, uh, we have, uh, kind of an unexpected, mm, I won't say unwanted, but a disruptive pregnancy. And in this Irish Catholic family, it's a pretty big deal. And, uh, but she's gonna, she's gonna keep the baby and grandma's gonna help. And then grandma just got injured and they're not like, it's like they're family and they love each other, but they don't necessarily like each other. That's kind of where we're at with this family. And, um, yeah, I'm loving the multiple perspectives and you're getting, you know, you'll have like relationships and you have one person's side of the relationship and then the other side of the per- other person's side of the relationship, you know, looking at the same kind of almost like data, but from b- different perspectives. So. I think later I'm going to take my mom home and then I need to get, I need to get a pedicure before I'm actually not positive. I'm going to wear sandals or not to the Memorial day event, but my current, my current nail polish color is just, I'm mean, first of all, I'm just not loving it. And they didn't have like my normal go-to and, um, it's just, it's not going to work for Memorial day. I'm not going to get like flags or anything like that, but I need something different. And, uh, yeah, so that's the plan for today. All right, it's Sunday morning, and the mission for today is to finish within arm's reach. I have like 70 pages or so to go. One thing, do you find this annoying? 
or like difficult. When you get towards the end of a book where you have like such a drastic difference in the the thickness of you know what each hand is holding, is it uncomfortable for you to hold? I find a lot of times I'll, I'll read laying down and it's particularly just uncomfortable and difficult to hold um, when I'm lying down. So um, anyway, um, but it's also exciting because it's like, ooh, I only have this much left. So um, anyway, it's like 8.50 right now and I need to leave at basically like 10 to go to church. And then I don't think I have anything else going on until like six o'clock tonight. I'm going to meet my sponsor before a seven o'clock meeting. And yeah, that's it. Just a moment ago, I finished within arm's reach and I really loved it. I thought, so I get that feeling towards the end of a book where it's like, you really want to finish it, right? And it's almost like painful to get through those last like 50 pages because you want to be finished. But then also that feeling of, as you get towards the end, not wanting it to be over. And I always find that to be kind of the mark of a really good book that I don't want to be away from these characters, particularly in a character-driven novel. The other thing is I thought this went to page 328 and it only actually went to 312. So when the end came, I turned to like the last page and kind of like this big thing is happening. And I was like really disappointed that I didn't have 16 more pages to, to continue. Um, but this is just a, a just what it is. It's a family drama, and we follow primarily three generations of this Irish Catholic family. But there's kind of a whisper of a fourth and fifth uh, well, proceeding, and uh, and a new uh, baby who comes. And it's just this. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of repressed grief and animosity. Um, just a lot of unspoken hurt in this family and so it's so great seeing the multiple perspectives because i think i said this before you have one set of events or a relationship that you then get both sides both perspectives from or, or multiple perspectives um on that so yeah i just i really loved it i love Anna napolitano's writing um it's just it's it's clear in that the, the, the sentences are well formed and the language doesn't get in the way of me understanding uh, the message. And so I'm able to just really get into the characters' heads and into the, into the story itself. So happy to have read this book. Um, Hello Beautiful is packed away. So I'll be looking forward to getting to that, her, her most recent book, um, after I move and get unpacked and all that. But um, speaking of which, the house closes on, let's see, today's Sunday. This house closes on Tuesday, I think, 29th, and my other house, the house I'm buying, not my other house, the house I'm buying will close on Wednesday. Getting the general contractor on board now, we've got all sorts of plans for, I guess I can put this down, um, all sorts of plans for uh, the updates we're gonna do, bathroom, kitchen, flooring, and uh, yeah, so I guess you'll, you know, if you wanna see that and you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit subscribe so you can see the the continuing saga of the, of the house move and what I'm going to read next. Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, no matter what.